Hi, Ben Johnson here with High Tech Friday to record how to make a simple multiplication game using Scratch. Now I still prefer the one that's installed on the desktop, but I know more and more people are going to the cloud-based one, so that's the one I'll go ahead and show you um, today. I'll start by explaining the game. We're going to have a game show host, this cat. He'll read the multiplication problems. The uh, snowman will be the good guy. He'll move across the screen uh, as you answer the questions correctly trying to outrun the sun, who will move across the screen at a constant speed. Okay, so that's the basics of the game. Um, the most complicated thing to understand is the concept of variables. I like to explain to students that when people need to remember something, they might write it down on a sticky note, and then if they need to refer back to it, they can look at the sticky note. Well, the computer doesn't have a sticky note. Instead, it has something called a variable. So when the computer needs to remember something or refer back to something, it stores it in a variable. And so that's what we'll start out making today is some variables. Um, the nice thing about variables, just like your sticky note that you might write someone's phone number on, if their number changes, you can just scratch that out and write a new number. And so variables work that way also. They can change if they need to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up Scratch. I would use uh, Chrome, and then you'll just type in Scratch in the search box, and uh, that'll take you to scratch.mit.edu, and you can just go ahead and hit um, Create. Now you may want to um, create an account and uh, sign in over here if you'd like to save it, which I'd recommend. Again, I like the desktop installed one a little better than the browser-based one, but um, this one works uh, pretty well too. So we're going to start by moving our host to the lower left hand corner and then we're going to pick our other characters and um, I'll just go with fantasy and I'm going to pick the uh, snowman for my good guy. Now it's too big so I can come up here to the shrink tool and uh, shrink him down so that he fits uh, and I'll put my good guy right above the cat and then I'll go grab another sprite with my sprite icon here and this is where you can um, grab a, another um, object and uh, I'll just go ahead and grab the sun here out of the space and so I'll get the sun sprite and again a little too big so just grab my shrink tool click off and then drag it into the right spot so we've got host good guy bad guy alright let's start by programming our host so I'll click on my kitty cat which you're welcome to change to if you'd like and then I'm going to go to data in the one that's installed on the desktop. It's called variables, but here it's called data, and we just want to make a variable. Again, right now we're just pulling out a sticky note, basically. And we're going to name this variable number one, num1. And that's just going to store a random number that we'll set in a minute. And we need, because multiplication requires at least two numbers, we need to make another variable, and we'll just call this num2. And again, we've just basically made a little sticky note for number one and number two, and Scratch will pick random numbers in a minute to assign those to. And then finally, we need a last variable to store the correct answer. And we'll tell um, Scratch how to calculate that. So we've got number one, number two, and correct variables. And now we need to set those initially. So now we're just pulling those sticky notes off of the pad and um, writing the numbers that belong on each sticky note. So we're going to change our number one. We can't just always have it multiplying by zero, so instead we'll go to operators and we'll choose pick a random number between one and ten. You can make your game harder or easier by changing these. And then we'll do the same thing with our number two variable. So um, Scratch is just going to pick random numbers and assign them to those uh, variables, those sticky notes that we made number one and number two. Again, you can change these to make it easier, more difficult. Finally, we need to store the correct answer somewhere. Well, Scratch needs to know how to calculate the correct answer. Well, um, if you come here to the multiplication, you can just simply go back to the data and multiply the first random number. by the second random number. And so the correct variable is going to get set to the first random number times the second random number, and that will store the correct answer. All right, now we can test it if we'd like to. We can click on the green flag and 
sometimes the uh, web version uh, behaves just a little bit slower. Turns out I need to double click here and you can see the random numbers that are being generated and the correct answer that's being stored. So that's great. All right, now we need our host to ask us to type in the correct answer for the question. So at this point we go to sensing because it's going to sense what you type on the keyboard and we're going to ask what's your name and weight, but we don't want to ask what your name is, we actually want to ask the math problem. So if we go back here to the operators, we need to put the first random number times the second random number here, so we have to do this join hello world. And because we need three characters, we actually need to dra drag it inside of one of the others, so we have this join, join hello world world. So don't worry too much about that, go back to the data, grab your number one, type a time sign here in X, whatever you want to do, and then here you'll drag the number two into the spot. So I can test this, and you can see the host, it says nine times eight. So we're good. Now we need to check to see if in fact um, we've typed the, the correct answer. So we'll go back to our control, and we'll get an if then else block. And we're going to see if the correct answer equals the answers that we typed. So we go to the operators and we come and grab the equal sign and we say if the answer in the sensing, the one that we typed into the keyboard, equals the answer that's stored in that correct variable. Okay, And if so, what is it going to do? Well, we need to tell our good guy to go. So if we go to events, we can broadcast a message. And instead of message one, I'm going to make a new message that just says go. So if our answer that we've typed equals the correct answer, we're going to tell our good guy to go. We're going to broadcast that, and we'll come back to that in a second. Plus, I want to have a nice message that says um, correct. And maybe I only want to play that for one second. Okay. If we're wrong, I want to have another message saying wrong. Okay. Now maybe one second. We want to continue to play this game until our good or bad guy hits the end of the stage. So we need to have this happen forever. So we go to our control, we wrap a forever around it, and that's good. Now we need a way to trigger this to start it. So we go back to our events and we'll just have the green flag start this into motion. All right, so that's the host. He's good. We can test it by clicking on the flag and make sure that that it works and maybe I'll type the wrong answer just to check that and you can see it says wrong and I'll type the correct answer and I got it right. So our, so our, good, our um, host is working fine, now we want to go to our good guy, in my case the snowman, and we want him to start in this position. So the way to do that is just by clicking on the middle of your snowman, make sure that he's not on the edge of the stage, click on the middle of your snowman, Go to motion and drag that go x, y, it's the sixth block down and it might be something like minus 200, zero, something like that. These are the coordinates of the snowman. If you don't know about coordinates yet, just know that um, there's an invisible grid that runs all over the stage, it's sort of like battleship, and these would be the coordinates for the center of our, our good guy. And so when we start the game, we want our good guy to always go to that position. Okay. Now, when he receives the go message, so when the host says go, we want him to do some things. And those things are to move forward. So we'll go to motion and we'll move forward. Now 10 steps is a pretty good speed. If you want to make it harder or easier, you can make it 15 steps. Harder, you can make it less steps. Okay. Now we need to check to see if our good guys hit the stage and that will determine if we've won. So we'll come back here to the control, we'll grab an if then, and what we're going to do is go to our sensing and we're going to see if our good guy is touching the edge. And if so, we're going to go ahead and go to the looks and say, I win. And we want to go to the control and stop all the whole game. Now um, we want this to happen forever. We want to see if he's touching the edge forever so we can then just grab and pull that edge. So if you need to pull things apart just grab them from the bottom or pull things out. 
So we need to wrap that in a forever. Good. So our good guy should be programmed at this point. Now we need to go to our um, bad guy. So we go to our bad guy. Again, we click on him. Click on the middle of your bad guy. And again, we're going to go to motion and drag that go x, y. And these are the coordinates of the middle of the sun, as, or your bad guy, as long as you clicked on that. And now you go to events. And you do, um, when clicked on, the bad guy is going to go back here to the um, beginning of the stage. Okay. Now, um, we're just going to set our bad guy to just go across the stage at a fixed speed the entire time. And so what we'll just do is grab a forever loop. And we'll just pop that right in. And then we're going to say motion move 10 steps, but that would be awfully fast. So we're just going to say move one step. And we'll go to the control and then wait one second. If you want to make that harder, you could make that faster, but you could change these numbers to make your bad guy move faster or slower. Okay. All right. Now, again, we need to check to see if our bad guys hit the edge because then we've lost and the game is over. So we go back to our control and we go to an if then we drag that in and we go to operators and we can um, go to our sensing and see if our bad guy is touching the edge and if so we want to go to looks and not say hello for two seconds but say you lose and then we can go back to our control and stop all now you might want to save this game so I'll just call this multiplication game okay save that and now we're ready to play so to play in full screen well first we don't want to be able to cheat so we can turn off these variables by going back to data and just simply unchecking those variables and now we can go to full screen by clicking this full screen button and I've noticed the cloud-based one takes some time to show up, but now we can just type it in and that answer is 18 and you should see my good guy advance. And again, you may need to play around with uh, those speeds uh, to get them so that it's competitive. It looks like right now I would have to be um, answering most of the questions correct in order to to beat my um, bad guy. Okay. Now as long as I make it to the edge of the stage before the bad guy I'll win and of course if the sun makes it to the end before me and now if, um, <clears throat> if I get it wrong of course this is wrong. Now we could set up a penalty for a wrong answer but we didn't so that would be a bonus uh, challenge uh, for you. And we'll just see if I can continue to play until I win here. And um, my multiplication isn't what it used to be, so hopefully I can beat beat the sun here. Now, as far as age groups, um, I've done this with classes as low as the third grade. I did that today with my son's class. Um, some of the concepts are, are very challenging, but um, for, I think, a lot of the um, advanced students, um, they can follow along pretty well. The whole concept of variables um, is a little, a little confusing, but I think that once they think of those as just um, sticky notes, that um, they're actually able to understand and you can see then my snowman won and it gave me that message and I could play again. So uh, grades to try this with, um, I, I would say for sure fourth, fifth, sixth grade could handle it. Third grade will probably have uh, some challenges but um, if they've got some experience with Scratch they should be okay. Um, thanks for watching this uh, episode of High Tech Friday.